All right, I want to get this group up here. This is the Walker family. They've done a lot of, they're from down southern Missouri. Down there at, uh, Brother Gary Zuber introduced me to him and uh, said we ought to have him. Went to, I went to Hiles Anderson College, is that right? Doggone. Yeah, to Hiles Anderson. Yeah. I went up there one time to watch Dr. Hiles baptized. I, you know, I, the very seldom I miss a Sunday here in the 47 years I've been here. But I did miss one Sunday, so I went to watch Dr. Hiles baptized. He baptized 154 that morning. It was like a, um, a, a, a what's it, assembly line. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like this. This is John Smith. John, you trusted Jesus as your Savior? God bless you. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Buried in baptism, raised in walking newness of life. This is Joe Smith here. Joe Smith, if you trust Christ as your Savior, that's good. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Jill Jackson over here. Jill, you come on. 154 of them. That was, and he's done, he's done a lot more than that. Baptized nearly 8,000 a year. That's a lot of people baptized. That's what we need in America. An old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival where the Democrats get saved and the Christians get right with God. Don't, don't get mad at me. I was a Democrat. I was, hey, I was raised in Independence, Missouri. Man, me and Harry Truman went to the same high school. He wouldn't even be a Democrat today if he's alive. And he told me that in a dream. <laughs> Brother Walker, you and your family, come on up here. Let's give him a big hand. Oh, I mean, we're going to have a time for about an hour here. Let me use mine, preacher. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Here we go. All right. Great. Well, it's good to be here with you all this morning. And uh, we've been looking forward to this opportunity. I felt like we knew you all before we got here because Brother Gary and Miss Ruth have been saying so many good things about you. He just gets, kept saying, you got to go there. you got to go there. And uh, they're such wonderful people. And... Uh, he loves your preacher dearly, and we thank God for this opportunity. Well, when you get saved, things are different. Amen? Whenever my grandpa got saved, my mama said, things sure were different around the house when daddy got saved. Because he was bad about drinking and fighting. He drank that old corn liquor they'd make in the moonshine stills back in the mountains of northwest Georgia. And his name was Tom Shelton. That name was known abroad for a fellow that was a rebel rouser and uh, ornery, mean. One night he came in drunk, busted my grandma right in the mouth, and knocked out her teeth. But she was married for better and for worse, and most of it was worse for her. She loved the Lord and raised the kids up in church and kept praying for him. And through a series of events, he got saved. And when he got saved, his vocabulary got saved. When he got saved, his friends got saved. When he got saved, his habits got saved. And he was a different man. It's different now. Once I was lost in sin, I had no peace within, to save my weary soul I knew not how, but Jesus came to me, and by his grace I'm free, now it's different, oh so different now. It's different yes, now, it's different since now. Jesus saved my soul. Saved my soul. It's different yes, now, it's different for now. by his blood I'm whole. Blood I'm whole. Oh, oh, Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. Now it's different, oh, 
so different now. I went to church one day to hear them sing and pray. The preacher firmly plowed the gospel plow. He said, you must repent. So down the aisle I went. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. It's different yes, now it's different since now. Jesus saved my soul. Saved my soul. It's, different yes, it's different now, for by his blood I'm whole. Oh, oh, Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. Now it's different, oh, so different now. And now my hopes are bright, I praise him day and night. How he could change me so I know not how. Praise the Lord, it's done. The victory now is won. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. It's different now. Yes, it's different since now. Jesus saved my soul. Since he saved my soul. It's different now. Yes, it's different for now. by his blood I'm whole. Oh, Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. Oh, Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. Well, as the preacher said, we're the Walker family of Roundup Ministries. Throwing a rope of hope to a lost and dying world. Trying to round up some souls to be saved. Rounding up some strays to get back in service. Rounding up some soul winners to search as we travel this country. Doing the work of God. Yeah, my volume got turned down. They're trying to figure out why they couldn't hear. That's what happens when you get old, I guess. But anyway, I introduced the family here to you. And it's an honor and privilege to serve the Lord together as a family. To work together as a team. We've been on the road now for 30 years. Uh, the kids grew up traveling, singing, and from the time they were little, quoting scripture, and uh, we have enjoyed serving God together, that's for sure. And I introduce them to you here on the far left, uh, Cowboy KW, he's my oldest son, plays bass, sings bass. Next to him is little Barbie. She is <laughs> his favorite wife today. And, uh, <laughs> Barb is right. uh, <laughs> Barb uh, is a lady of many talents. She is a chalk artist. She does, you know, have you ever seen the chalk drawings? There will be hidden images in them when they turn on black lights. It's kind of a lost art. And uh, so she does that, and she uh, also does face painting. She painted me up this morning. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, for our cowboy carnivals and on and on many things. And then my son Joe is usually standing here next to me. He's my picker and a grinner of the group. And uh, his car broke down. The radiator, they was trying to come to be here for this meeting. They had to go to a funeral in Indiana. The radiator blew out. They couldn't get a new one in time. And so he said, Dad, he said, I'm so, he was, honestly, he was so disappointed. He said, I wanted to go and be there at Elm Grove and meet Brother Sandy. He said, this is terrible. He says, you tell him he's got to have us back when I can come. <laughs> And so he and his wife, and they got two girls, and they travel with us full time. And so we got three buses pulling three trailers going down the road with quite a caravan and uh, with Champ and Dixie and our Cowboy Carnival and all the stuff we got going. And I got KWs to the youngins down here in the front, uh, Kevin and Laura Lynn. And uh, he is so disappointed that there's not a treehouse service going on up there. <laughs> He wanted to get up there and see the bear and, you know, <laughs> experience all that. So we're going to have to come in and sneak in under the radar, radar so he can uh, come and enjoy that. He was pretty impressed by all that stuff there. And I see we got some young and some buckaroos up there in the uh, balcony. And uh, good, they got COVID, and that's why they're up there. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, but we're COVID-free, that's for sure. No COVID around here. We don't let it in. When you come in these doors, you're safe. All right, so... We're going to do, and uh, oh, who? I didn't introduce you yet. <laughs> Whoops. You think I ought to do that? Uh, All right, well, this is, uh, we picked her up under a bridge. No. <laughs> this is my favorite, one and only, sweet baby honey mama Loretta Jean. She's been happily married, living the dream for 36 years. <laughs> and she is happy, happy, happy. Yes, that's for sure. I'm so happy. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you almost uh, forgot me. I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it just I was just distracted. Brother Zuber does that to people. But anyway. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is a cowboy song we're going to sing for Buckaroos up there. And uh, we're going to let you all help us sing it. And we'll sing it through one time and uh, give you a little catch of the tune here. It goes like this. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going down the narrow trail. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going home with my Bible in my saddle to help me win the battle. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going home. Yippee-i-yay, yippee-i-o. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going home. Yee-haw! All right, now you caught that. You're jumping right in there. You can put your hands together and sing. Now, we got parts for you. We're going to have a little contest here, especially with these buckaroos up there. And so the preacher, the holy right reverend, Luster's potentate of Elm Grove Baptist Church, is going to come up here. He's going to be the judge. He's went through rigorous hours of contest song judging, and uh, his ears are tuned in. He's going to be listening for vocal clarity, watching for choreography, and all that stuff. And uh, preacher are going to have a little contest between the cowboys and the cowgirls to see who does the best. And these adults down here are going to help determine yes. who wins. It looks like we got... Uh, we got uh, boys and girls, or boys over they're here and girls mixed. over here. They're no, mixed. they're mixed up here. Okay, well, that's all right. We're going to have a contest between the cowboys and cowgirls. Okay. Now, right. cowboys on your part. Oh, there they are. Okay, they're okay. ready. Now, uh, cowboys on your part, we'll go yippee oh, No, that's girls. That's, I'm sorry. Okay. So on that part, we go yippee That's the girls. They stand up. They sing that out real loud and clear, and then they sit back down. So we're going to start sitting down so you all can be seated up there, and then the cowboys are going to do what we do best. We talk back to the girls when they get bossy. And so when the girls say, yippee i boys, we're going to answer back, yippee i -yo. And then we sit back down. Okay, we're going to see who does the best. Whoever does the best does not have to pay a double tithe today. Okay? <laughs> so here we go. Are you ready? Adults. All right. And you adults, help us out here on these parts. Okay, here we go. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going down the narrow trail. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going home with my Bible, with my Bible in my saddle to help me win the battle. I'm a happy Christian cowboy. All right, cowgirls. Yippee -i -yay. Cowboys, yippee i -yo. I'm a happy Christian cowboy. Now that was pretty good, but I know we can do a lot better, so let's try it again. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going down the narrow trail. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going home with my Bible. With my Bible in my saddle to help me win the battle. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going home. Cowgirls, yippee i -yay. Cowboys, yippee i -yo. I'm a happy Christian cowboy going home. Yee-haw! Now, preacher, who did the best on that right there? The boys, the boys did. <laughs> Cowboys did the best on they, that. They okay, really all right. I hate to admit they that, were just, but they did you know, the just best. getting warmed up here. But anyway, okay. Well, we'll maybe give them another chance there, ladies. So, cowboys, you win, Don't and you get to eat today. <laughs> all right, there you go. Are we ready? Got us. Got us. See. Oh, let me change up here a little bit. All right. This song's entitled, God is Still Good. Amen. <clears throat> and if the words God is good or God is still good are uttered from the pulpit at Victory Baptist Church in Shelbyville, Tennessee, all the congregation talks back to the preacher and says, all the time. That's the only time they get to talk back to the preacher <laughs> is when he says, it could be in the middle of the message. And if he says God is good, everybody says, all, All the, the time. time. Don't lose sight of the goodness of Amen. God. Amen. As I look back on all of my days, so many times, so many ways, I have been blessed. And all I can say is God has been good. Sometimes the night brings sorrow and pain. Sometimes the tears fall like a rain. But through it all, He's never changed, God is still good. God is still good when the waves grow high. 
God is still good all through the night when I've done all I can and I don't understand. God is still good. Clouds of doubt may darken the way, but showers of blessing will come any day. It'll bring me through, and I'll stand and say, God is still good. There have been times when I've let him down, made my mistakes, still I have found. I may stumble and fall, but through it all, God is still good. Mercy still flows from the palm of his hand, he will give grace and help me to stand. And although he knows how unworthy I am, God is still good. God is still good when the waves grow high. God is still good all through the night. When I've done all I can and I don't understand, God is still good. Clouds of doubt may darken the way. Showers of blessing will come any day. He'll bring me through, and I'll stand and say, God is still good. God is still good when the waves grow high. God is still good all through the night. When I've done all I can and I don't understand, God is still good. Clouds of doubt. May darken the way, showers of blessing will come any day. He'll bring me through, and I'll stand and say, God is still good. Clouds of doubt may darken the way, showers of blessing will come any day. He'll bring me through, and I'll stand and say, God is still good. a song off our newest CD called uh, Triumph Through the Trials, and thank the Lord that uh, he answers prayer, Amen. and he'll see <laughs> us through, amen. I think you'll like this song entitled God Can. I can't calm a raging storm, but God can. of the morn but God can and I can't cause the birds to sing or make flowers bloom when it comes spring or mend the sparrows broken wing but God can it's good to know the one who hung the stars in bright array it's good to know he sees the hurt I feel from day to day. No, I can't part the mighty sea, and I can't make the demons flee, but I can fall down on my knees and God can. The children God has trusted into my hands. Their future my eyes may not see, but God can. When tomorrow's come, he'll still be there. So I'll just leave them in his care, knowing he will hear my prayer. And God can. It's good to know the one who hung the stars in bright array and it's good to know he sees the hurt i feel from day to day no i can't part the mighty sea and i can't make the demons flee 
thee, but I can fall down on my knees and God can. Pastor said that I could let you know that um, I uh, produce this magazine, our family does as a team. It's called Christian Womanhood. It's for ladies only. Sorry, guys. Some, uh, some men do read it because they want to know what their wives are learning. Uh, but most of the time, it's just for ladies. And uh, it comes out once a month. It's a, there's 12 issues in a year, of course. The men are going to pass it out for me. Thank you, gentlemen. If you don't mind, start passing out to the adult ladies. And um, it's available for you to sign up and prescribe. Subscribe. I always say prescribe. Isn't that terrible? Uh, subscribe uh, for it's thirty dollars a year if it comes to your address. But if you look it over, don't you know if, later on if you want to look it over. And if you, but if a group of ten, at least ten of you ladies got together and said you wanted it, it would go down to just twenty dollars a year, and then it would come to the church and somebody would distribute it once a month to you. So uh, each month it has a different theme in it, and it uh, it's. It's to encourage you. And my, my main teachings that I do is about your attitude because I think when your attitude's right, the whole family is just better. You know, when mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. You know that saying, don't you? So uh, it works out so well if uh, the women keep their attitudes right and keep yourself. And I, next year I'm doing a, a little theme about get closer to God because I think during perilous times, the only thing you could do, you can't fix what's going on around you, but you can get closer to God, and he can give you the grace and peace to go through whatever you're going through. So just letting you know about it, and come talk to me at the table back there if you're interested. I'd be so excited to share it with you. Thank you, Loretta. And now, men, how would you like to have your wife rise up and call you blessed? To meet you at the door with a kiss the remote control for the TV, a little bell for you to ring for service when you need something, the children sitting in their places, your favorite meal simmering on the stove. Yes, sign her up for Christian Womanhood. It could change your life, amen? But uh, I know that that will be a blessing to you, and many ladies enjoy that uh, little magazine that comes out monthly, and I hope that you'll pray for us. And pray for Roundup Ministries, pray for the Walker family as we travel this country from coast to coast, preaching revivals, missions conferences, youth rallies, couples retreats, of course, specializing in our Roundup Sundays, helping churches have big days and outreaches and seeing folks saved. And uh, we were just at a church in Oklahoma City, and they broke their attendance record here just uh, last, uh, to us two weeks ago, and uh, had over 500 with 97 saved. Amongst COVID, can you blame that? Yeah, you know, they'd like to shut the churches down. Yeah, they're overstepping their bounds, that's for sure. But, hey, when Christians get persecuted, when Christians get backed in a corner, they thrive, and God blesses, and uh, we praise the Lord for, for what the Lord did there. And uh, praise God that there's churches that haven't shut down and haven't bowed the knee to Baal. They are just going to go on. Amen, and thank the Lord for churches like yours that uh, haven't closed their doors, that's for sure, for convenience sake. But pray for us. Got a picture of Champ and Dixie Dog and our information there on the back. And uh, I got a couple CDs here that I want to give to the children's church workers that are up there. And so maybe if one of you men uh, could help me take these up there to the, to the... Can somebody take these? These are two DVDs of Ranger Walker and Gabby, and you're going to meet them in just a minute. But let's give those two CDs to the workers up in the balcony. And we've got one for a boy and one for a girl that are best behaved. And so you workers up there watch, and uh, whoever's the best, they'll get that CD. They can, it's got some uh, songs and skits and different things on it that the children will enjoy, and they'll get to meet Gabby here in just a moment. He's anxious to get out here. And uh, we've got children's CDs back down the table. Of course, our family picking and grinning. This here is the newest CD called Triumph Through the Travels. And uh, that song about God can and uh, Daniel prayed and uh, Jesus hold my hand over and over out of harm's way. Several of our favorite songs we'll be singing some more here this afternoon are on there. Uh, here's one called, we got 14 CDs, so I'm not going to tell you about them all. But this one here is called Heaven Bound. And if you've got somebody that's headed for heaven soon, 
It's a great encouraging CD, all songs positive, encouraging about heaven, and it comforts your heart if maybe you're losing somebody or you've lost a loved one. My cousin recently went home to be with the Lord uh, due to illnesses of many years that he'd been fighting and battling, and he listened to the CD over and over and over. My family teasingly said, Kevin, we are glad that Daddy is gone because we were tired of your CD. <laughs> he, he just listened to it constant. And I thought, well, if that could just bring some comfort and encouragement to somebody, it was worth it just for my cousin to be able to have it. But that CD is special in that way about heaven, our 25th anniversary CD. Got some extra songs back there. If you like the picking and grinning and banjos and mandolins and and the harmonicas and fiddles and such, well, that's what's on there. And then we've got a couple racks of uh, some CDs back there that come from Faith Music Ministries. And if you're looking for good Christian music, uh, you're not going to find it at Walmart uh, and on most radio stations. Uh, that's the truth. I like listening to music that's sung by people that have a lifestyle to back it up. And uh, it's uh, sung by people that are soul winners. They're Sunday school teachers. They're bus workers. They're preachers. They love the Lord. They got a life style to back it up and uh like here's one of my favorites on there by the uh Epleys, jonathan and tiffany epley and god we still trust young people really like this one too and uh it's music that uh you would not uh, be ashamed of to have and to listen to that's for sure and uh, so music's a powerful tool you give me your music and i can control you it sets an atmosphere it creates a mood it can put a smile on your face and a skip to your feet if you got the right kind of music. And that's one of the evidences of a spirit-filled Christian is they listen to the right kind of music because it feeds your soul, amen? So stop by there, take a look. Uh, back there, we've got uh, several different things, and uh, this is our uh, flip chart for salvation for On the Way to Heaven. It was developed on the mission field, and uh, we, it worked so well, we just brought it home and we used it. And it's just a flip chart that goes through the plan of salvation, and then on the back, it's even got things to say, points to get across. If you're not real familiar with presenting the gospel, it's great to use in Sunday school classes or dealing with a group of kids and, of course, dealing with sin and the, the fact of heaven's a real place and uh, hell. You've got to get people lost before they can get saved. I had a junior church preacher from First Baptist Hammond, and they, they implemented using my flip chart for the children that were dealt with at every invitation, all the workers were required to use this flip chart because it was so effective. And they said once they started using that, because see, a picture says a thousand words. And if you see it and hear it, you can understand and comprehend 85% more. That's what I love about your treehouse ministry and all that. I mean, it captures those kids and it gets their attention. And so visual aids are very important, big. Well, they said when they started using it, they said our repeat salvations for our bus children went way down because they were getting it. It was getting there, head and heart, and they didn't have near as many, and uh, they made it a requirement for them. And uh, it's not a requirement to get saved, but it's just a tool, something that could be used to be able to help people understand about getting saved. And of course, the little cowboy kneeling and praying, the hand of God coming out of heaven with the gift of eternal life amen but that's what that's all about there's other things that are back there might be a blessing a help to you along life's way my stepdaddy he passed away not long ago and he used to always wear this hat and uh cia he had a cia and a fbi hat and of course cia christians in action is what it is and every time he'd wear that he'd go into a store he'd go somewhere somebody would always make a comment and then he'd be reaching in his pocket pulling out a track because it opened up a door and he witnessed to all kind of folks is that, is a, just a, is a testimony. And so uh, I don't carry stuff to carry stuff. I carry it maybe because it's a tool, maybe because it helps somebody. Be a witness. I think Christians ought to not be ashamed of the fact they're saved, amen? And Christmas is coming. I know it could be maybe a gift or something. It would be a blessing or a help to somebody along life's way. And I promise that all the proceeds will go to a needy family by the name of the Walkers, all right? But I've got a special friend that's in here, and he's got to come out and meet our buckaroos uh, that are here, and his name is Gabby, and so we're going to see if we can wake him up here. Gabby, it's time to... Oh, thank you, Ranger Walker. What? Did you know it's only 19 days 
till Christmas, 19 days to shop to get me my favorite thing. You know what I want? What do you want, Gabby? I need a super duper bionic booger blaster to shoot the girls. Now, wait a minute, Gabby. And did I tell you I wanted it? Uh, well, yeah, but it, could you get it? From? Gabby, wait, wait, wait. You don't go around telling everybody what you want for Christmas and asking or making demands, okay? Now, if they ask you what you'd like to have, then, okay, a super-duper ionic booger blaster. They're at Walmart, nine ninety five. Gabby. Okay. Where are we at? Well, Gabby, we're at the nursing home. No, Gabby. <laughs> See that old man sitting with his daughter? Are you talking about Brother Gary? Yeah, that old man sitting with his daughter. Now, Gabby... That's Brother Gary Zuber. Yeah, that old man sitting with his daughter. No, Gabby. That's not his daughter. That's his wife. And we are at church. Really? Wow. We are at Elm Grove Baptist Church in the Kansas City area. And um, the, the preacher here is a good friend of Brother Gary. Okay. Brother Sandy's the preacher. When did Brother Sandy get out of jail? Well, Gabby... I, I don't think he's been in jail. Prison? No. Okay. No, he's the pastor here, and this is our first time here. Well, you'll never eat that. Yeah, Gabby, now listen. And we're going to get on, but today we're talking about heaven. We're wanting folks to go to heaven with us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, heaven. I know who's not going to heaven. Who's not going to heaven? Girls. No, not one. Gabby. Zero. Not going to make it. What makes you say there'll be no girls in heaven? The Bible says so. Well, the preacher knows it's true. He, he's got a Bible, and he lives with a girl. Now, wait a minute, Gabby. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No girls in heaven. I've read the Bible through from cover to cover, and I don't ever, ever remember reading anything about no girls in heaven. Well, you need to pay attention. Where does it say that? In the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. Where? It says there was silence in heaven for 30 minutes. <laughs> Girls can't be quiet, so they're not going to make it. Sorry. No, I can't. Gabby, that's not what that's teaching, okay? You got to be careful. That's how isms and schisms and cults and false doctrines get started. As people take the word of God to twist it up to mean things it was never intended to mean, okay? It does not mean that, okay? There will be girls in heaven. Oh. Really? Yes. Wow. That takes the fun out of it. Oh, Gabby, now wait a minute. <laughs> that's not true. You, you know that's not true. Well... I'm a puppet, and I don't have a soul, and I wish I could go to heaven with you and preacher and Miss Loretta. So I guess when the Lord comes back, I'll be left behind with Brother Daniel. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Brother Daniel, we're going to run this place. I'll take up the offering, and you can preach. Oh, Gabby, no way. Gabby. Brother Daniel loves the Lord. He's got a testimony. He's going to be in heaven. I don't think so. You need to talk to his wife. No, wait a minute, Gabby. <laughs> okay, Gabby, it's time for us to go, and you're going to have to get back in. No, don't say dirty words. The kids aren't listening. Oh, Gabby, it's time to go. Now you got to get in your box. Oh! <laughs> No, the torture chamber. It's not a torture chamber. And I want you to get in here. I want you to be good because Champ and Dixie Dog are going to come out here now. Oh, now, wait, before you get in here, you need to apologize to Brother Daniel. I don't see him. He's out back smoking. No, Gabby, he is not. <laughs> you don't have to apologize. Okay, Brother Daniel, wherever you are, I'm sorry. That you're not going to make it, Gabby. Okay, get in here. I, well, listen, 
You had a hand in it too now. Shh, be quiet. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, we're going to read some scripture here and get started. Champ and Dixie are going to help me preach a message this morning. I want you to take your Bibles, if you would, and uh, turn over to John chapter number 14. John chapter 14. And when you find your places, we'll stand together. John chapter 14. Familiar passage, John chapter 14, verse number 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Boy, don't be afraid. It's going to be all right. A lot of folks are full of fear. Don't be afraid. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, a place, the city, where there's streets, buildings, and there's people, there's rivers of water, plants. Boy, the Bible says, I have not seen nor ears heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Oh, heaven's going to be far greater than this. He said in verse 3, and I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's a Jesus way, a Bible way, a God way. It's not the Allah way, the Muhammad way, the Buddha way. Jesus is the only way. Oh, there's all kinds of ways to get to Kansas City from here. A lot of people think it's that way with heaven. All kinds of ways to get to heaven as long as you're sincere. No, that's not it at all. There's one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Champ and Dixie are going to help me preach a message this morning on the way to heaven. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for your word. Thank you for this great church and what it stands for and represents. And thank you for preacher that's been here faithful now all these 47 years. We pray that you would be honored and glorified through everything that's said and done here today. We ask this in your name. Amen. You all can be seated. Now, Champ and Dixie Dog are going to come in here and help me right now. And so wherever they are, okay, here they come down center aisle here. And uh, this is... Champ, my little horse, and Dixie Dog. All right. Now then, as you can see, Champ is an American. He's rare, wearing his red, white, and blue tennis shoes. Way howdy to everybody, Champ. Good boy. Give him a smile right there. Give him a smile. Good boy. He likes to smile. If you have Jesus in your heart, you ought to have a smile on your face. Amen. That's for sure. And uh, he's proud to be an American. Well, he's got his red, white, blue saddle blanket on. Boy, you'll never find him kneeling at the national anthem. No, sir. He is proud to be an American. That's for sure. Yes. Amen. And uh, Dixie Dog. she is a Pomeranian puppy. She's been riding on Champ since she was just six months old. When she was given to us, she's a rescue dog, and uh, Dixie is uh, from Florida. That's why we call her Dixie. She's a southern girl. She loves to ride, and uh, we're going to let her do some tricks and stuff right now here for you, so I'm going to pull her off and, and uh, let Cowboy take uh, Champ off to the side right now, and uh, Dixie, all right, now, we're going to do some of our tricks here for me. Come over here and sit down. You don't need to check everything out. All right, shake it off. Good. You got to learn Dixie over here. All right here, sit down. You got to learn to shake things off when things don't go your way. You have a flat tire on your way to work, shake it off. You go into a store and they demand and they're ugly and in your face, get your mask on and you just shake it off. You just shake it off. Uh, something breaks, you have a flat tire. Uh, we were on our way here yesterday 
and I had uh, serviced the truck and, and had changed the oil and changed the fuel filters, and they didn't want to start. Dixie, get up back over here. Sit down there. Hey, sit down. And it took us four hours to get all the air bled out of the system. <gasps> what do you do? You just shake it off. You just got to keep going. Yeah, we got to learn to live that way, that's for sure. And we need to look, teach our kids to look at people in the eyes. When people are talking to you, you look at them in the eyes. You're respectful. And whenever that they speak, yeah, speak. You speak too. So get back over here. And when they want to shake your hand, you shake, yeah. And we got to learn to obey. Hey, lay down. Lay down. Good. Roll over. Roll over all the way. There you go. Stand up. Hey, stand up. Now give me a little dance. Good girl. Spin. Good. Get in your kennel. Open that door and get in. There you go. Now have a seat. Get back in there. Sit down. Stay right there. All right. Now, you need to learn to obey. Obedience is doing what you're told to do when you're told to do it with the right attitude. And if you've got a child that obeys, you have programmed them. Hey, get back in there. And they will test you in front of public and people. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, they're programmable. I hope you're programming your kids right. I hope you don't have to tell them 15 times to do something. Because if you do, you've programmed them to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Having a child that's respectful, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, thank you, please. They, you tell them to sit down and they obey without an attitude, whatever, what for. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're programmable. Yeah, and that's your job as a parent. You'll program them. Just like this dog has been programmed, you program your children. Oh, yeah. And it makes them much more enjoyable, that's for sure. Now, Dixie's going to do a trick here for me. Are you ready? Let's go. She's going to climb the ladder, go down the slide, jump through the hoop. Ready? Let's go. Up the ladder, down the slide, through the hoop. Good. Come back through. Good. Come back through. Good. Over the stick. Good. Come back over. Come back over. Good. Give her a hand right there. Good job. All right. Now. All right. Come on over here. Have a seat. You want to catch your frisbee? All right. Stay right there. In just a minute, let me fix this. Our, this slick floor we spin out on. We don't have these rubber mats down. They're coming apart. All right, come back over here. Over here. Sit down. All right, stay right there. Stay. All right, catch that frisbee. Oh, you missed that one. You missed that one. Come on. Let's try it again. I know. You're trying. Okay, come back over. Come back over here. Over here. Further. You're cheating. You're cheating. All right, right there. Stay right there. Let's see if we can get this one. All right, ready? Catch it. Ooh. That was a quick catch and release there, but that's a good job. Now, are you, oh yeah, wipe your feet. Yeah, you got to wipe your feet before you go in the house. And it sounds like you're getting a cold. Are you getting a cold? Oh, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Oh my. I don't know if you heard her. She was sneezing right there. Here, you need to take some medicine. And I want you to get in your bed. Get in that bed right there. Get in the bed and lay down and go to sleep. Why don't you go to sleep right now and lay down. Hey, Dixie, Dixie, lay down and go to sleep. No, lay down and go to sleep. This is not time to be jumping on the bed. No, lay down. Whew. Hope it don't take 30 minutes for you to get your kid to go to bed at night. Hmm. Yeah, this big ordeal. I need a drink of water. I got to go potty. Booger man's in the closet. Monster's under the bed. 30 minutes later. Ah, finally, they lay down. No. Obedience, remember? doing what you're told to do, when you're told to do it with right. Obedience, this dog is very obedient, and so it makes her very valuable. Have you ever tried to teach a dog some tricks and it didn't work so well? It's like they're not listening. Well, they're like people. There's differences. Dixie is, has an intense desire to please, okay? She wants to make her master happy. Who are you trying to make happy? Who are you trying to please? Who are you boys and girls living for? I hope we're living for God. I hope we're wanting to please him and make him happy. That's for sure. Now, we go to bed early on Saturday because get back in your bed. We go to bed early on Saturday because Sunday was church day. And we'd get up early. Mama fixed a big old breakfast. And boy, she'd have, man, she'd have scrambled eggs and gravy and 
biscuits, and boy, she would put that on the table. Yeah, you know what's coming. Get back in the bed. And she'd say, come and get it. But we didn't eat like animals. We would pray. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the food. Amen. We didn't pray at dinner time. Dear Lord, thank you for dinner. Amen. We'd even pray at supper time. Dear Lord, thank you for supper. Amen. We didn't pray in public at a restaurant. You got like McDonald's, you got to pray because that's not real food. Dear Lord, help this stuff to help me. Amen. Yeah. We didn't pray when we go to bed at night. Now I lay me down to sleep. Hope Lord my soul to keep. Amen. Yeah. I hope that you're not ashamed of Jesus. I hope you're not ashamed to pray. That's for sure. I love it whenever I go to a restaurant and I'll see a family, bow their head. In public? Yeah. See, we got too many undercover secret agents for Jesus. <laughs> we need some folks that aren't ashamed. That's the reason why America's in the shape it's in. That's the reason why we got prayer and Bible kicked out of the schools, because Christians didn't do their job. Because this country wasn't founded on that. They're having to rewrite the history books, aren't they, to get their way. Yeah, that's for sure. But I hope you'd pray. Pray in the morning, pray at night, have family time together. Yeah, that's good. Now, then we'd go off to church. So, Dixie, go get back in your kennel. Good. Now, turn around there and sit down. Now, that kennel's going to represent church. And the old devil don't want you to go to church and fall in love with Jesus. He's going to try everything he can to try to distract you and to get you to get distract, sidetracked. How many people do we know they used to go to church, but now they're not anymore? Kids used to ride the bus, but they don't. What happened? They got older, and you start, the older they get, the more you lose. They get distracted. The old devil's pretty smart. He might use something good to get you to do something bad. Hey, we're going to have a soccer team, and you can wear a uniform and run around on the field and kick the ball, and we're going to practice on Saturday, and then Sunday about 1030, we're going to play. What do you say about that? And that's not going to be all year, just for a little while, so it don't hurt. You ain't got to, come on, let's come on out and play. Come on. I'm talking to you. Come on. Let's play. It's going to be a lot of fun. You might win a little trophy for participation. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, here. Football season. Yeah, we're going to have a tailgate party. We're going to have a lip smacking, belly pooching, tongue tickling, eye popping, good time. Now, you went to church Sunday morning, but you don't have to go back again Sunday night. Don't be a fanatic. Come on. What do you say? Huh? Going to have a good time. All right. Going to have to pull out my secret weapon. I got Clifford. He wants to play kissy face with you. I got a little boyfriend. What do you say? What are you yawning about? I mean, Clifford, come on, really? See, Satan's really good at making bad look good and good look bad. Oh, don't be deceived by Satan's snares. <laughs> yeah, he'd love for you to get distracted and to pull away from the things of God. He doesn't want you to fall in love with Jesus. He doesn't want you to walk with the Lord. He'll, right here, stand up, walk, walk. Walk the Bible way, come on, read the Bible daily and don't forget to pray. Walk, walk, walk the Bible way, read the Bible every day. Good girl, and I have a seat right there, come here, have a seat. The devil's a thief. Dixie, right here, sit down, stay. The devil's a thief, and he wants to rob from us. Reach for the skies. Yeah, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. You're supposed to die right now. Bang, bang, bang. Bang. All the way dead. <sighs> she doesn't like to die. <laughs> but listen, for the Christian, death is not the end. It's just the beginning of eternal life. Be healed. Oh, yeah, I tell you what. Thank the Lord for heaven. That's for sure. Hey, let's bring Champ out here. He's been back there pawing and trying to distract everybody. And so, we're going to let him do his behaviors right now. Let me find, uh, here we go. All right. Now, Champ, we've been talking about Gary and about how much of a sinner that he was and is and uh, teasing on him. Gabby was teasing on him pretty good. Paul, the ground for every sin that Brother Gary committed today. One Paul for every sin that he did today, okay? Just for today only. Champ, that's a lot of sin. 
But the truth is, we all have sin. But you know something that help you not sin so much is by going to church. Champ's got his church sitting chair here. So, Champ, let's spin around a place where you can go to get instruction in righteousness and in holy living. Yeah, come on back here and have a seat. There you go. Go ahead and sit down. It's all right. Got this slick floor. Things are moving on us, isn't it? <laughs> all right. Now, Champ, I want you to behave. I want you to sit still. And uh, we go to church to worship the Lord. We go to church to show God that we love him. When we put money in the offering, you give. That shows God you love him. You worship the Lord by singing songs to him and about him. You worship the Lord by listening to the preacher. Preach and teach. That's for sure. Now, some people think because they go to church, they're going to heaven. But just because you go to church doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven someday. But it's a good place to go to find out how to get to heaven. Amen. Let's bring the teeter board up here, if you would, cowboy. We use that like a scale. If you know much about horses, they don't like anything that rocks and teeters and moves under their feet. It's unnatural for them to get up on something like this, but uh, champs learn to trust me, and we're going to use it like a scale. You know, so many people, you'd ask them, hey, if you died today, do you know you're going to heaven? And they'll say, yeah. How do you know? Because I'm good. Problem is, some days you're good, some days you're being bad. Come on, give me some bad. Give me some bad. Some days you're doing right. Some days you're doing wrong. Give me some wrong. Yeah. Some days you're respectful. Some days you're disrespectful. Some days you're obedient. That's not enough obedient. Some days you're obedient. Like, really obedient. Whew, man. Back and forth. And people think if my good outweighs my bad, I'll go to heaven. But the Bible says, for by grace you are saved through faith. And not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So I'm not going to heaven because my good outweighs my bad. Oh, it doesn't work that way. Now, are you done? Are you done? Okay, good. Let's step down off of here. And I want you to show them how you can be really good. I want you to behave yourself. I want you to be misbehaving. Don't be making no faces. All right, these boys and girls are watching you. You're supposed to be a trained, professional, performance animal. So I want you to be really good. Now, last most important question is this. If you died today, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven? That's last most important question. Now, champ, give me, hey, hey, this is not a chew toy. Champ, champ, would you stop it? Now, you're supposed to be, no, be smiling at me. You're supposed to be good. Leave it alone. This is my bandana. It's a necessary tool. Whenever a cowboy's got a bandana, it's got 101 uses. You can use it as a napkin, as a towel, as a bandage, as a sling, as a water filter, as a flag to wave somebody down, as a mask to put over your face to keep the dust and dirt out of your mouth and nose when you're riding drag on the herd. Oh, you can use it as a blindfold for an ornery horse. Or a do-rag when you're riding your Harley. <laughs> now, leave it alone. Don't be messing with my bandana anymore. Now, because of sin, anything we think, <laughs> give me this back. Champ, champ, champ. You are being an example of a sinner. And sin is anything we think, say, and do that breaks the heart of God. And the Bible says, for all have sinned. And you're being a good example of that. Now, no more taking my bandana. Are you going to take it anymore? You better not. Now, because of sin, we're going to die. Champ, now give me this back. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yuck, you're getting, oh, you're getting slobber all over it. Well, now you're going to have to play dead. You ever seen a horse play dead? All right, here we go. The wages of sin is death. So, scooch over there a little bit. All right, let's go down. Someday we're going to die. Champ is 20 years of age. He'll live to be about 35. These miniature horses live a little long. They say, you're dead. You're not smiling. We don't, we don't put you in a coffin with a smile on your face. And you lay here and you behave yourself. All right? Now, someday we're going to die. Champ will die of old age, no doubt. And so we got many years of service together, good Lord willing. But you and I die because of sin. That's why Jesus laid down his life for us. 
Jesus Christ, the perfect sinless Son of God, laid down his life and died for you and I, but God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why? Because we're sinners headed for hell. And he paid our sin debt. But he didn't stay dead. On that third day, something happened. On that third day, death couldn't hold him. On that third day, the grave couldn't keep him. On that third day, up from the grave he arose. He ascended up into heaven. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, preparing a place for us. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And that place is called heaven, a place of eternal life. And how do we get the free gift of God, eternal life in heaven? Well, if a sinner would put their faith and trust in Jesus and pray and say, Lord, I know that I have sinned. I know that I deserve hell. And I want you to forgive me. I want you to save me from my sins, for I believe you died and was buried and rose again the third day. Amen. Oh, when a sinner puts their faith and trust in Jesus, when a sinner opens their heart and calls upon the Lord for the gift of salvation, <laughs> their sins are forgiven. Their name is written down in the Lamb's book of life, and all of heaven rejoices. Now, I want you to represent heaven for me. Champ's going to rear up on his hind feet as a symbol of victory and a new name getting written down in glory. And I want you to represent heaven and hoot and holler and cheer like you never have before because somebody just got saved. There you go. Good job. Oh, I tell you what, there is rejoicing in heaven in the presence of the angels over a sinner that repenteth. The angels aren't rejoicing. It's the born-again believers that are there that are rejoicing because they know what it's like to be lost. Yeah. Now, God's got plans for you after you get saved. Oh, see, Champ, he was a hay burner. He was a good-for-nothing horse. Couldn't ride him, couldn't catch him, couldn't work him. He was just a yard ornament. We found him. We cleaned him up. We started working with him, started teaching him because he responded right, because he yielded to his master, because he obeyed his master. Guess what? He escaped being turned into dog food. He escaped being turned into glue. Oh, yeah. Instead of being a good-for-nothing hay burner, man, now he's living the dream. Well, he's traveling all around the country, helping Ranger Walker preach the gospel. Thousands, over 10,000 have gotten saved with seeing him perform over these 10 years now that he's been with me on the road. Oh, yeah. He's got a padded stall with fans in the summer and heaters in the winter. Oh, I tell you what, boys and girls bring him carrots and apples. They love getting their pictures taken with him. He's living the dream. He never go back to them old pastures of sin doing as he pleased. Hey, boys and girls, don't ever think I'm nothing. I'm not important. I'm not smart. I'm dumb. I ain't as fast as everybody else. People might ridicule you and put you down, but you're special. There's a reason why you're here. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. You're not an uh-oh. God's got a plan for you. That's for sure. And who would ever think, old champ, this little miniature horse would do what he's done as he's traveled this country? Oh, yeah, there'll be a bunch of people in heaven. Are there horses in heaven? Well, sure, there's horses in heaven. The Bible says the armies of God will be coming back on white horses. Champ will be up in heaven. He'll be white there. Amen. Anyway, his next behavior is a little bit ridiculous. Now, be still. You're moving around too much. Be still. Um, this next behavior is a little ridiculous. He thinks it's funny, so you're going to have to humor him. All right, you ready? We call this bottoms up. Because his bottom is up. Give him a hand right there. And someday, whenever we get to heaven, the Bible says that every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I shall see. And if you've enjoyed Champ the Smiling Trick Horse, give him a round of applause. And he gets these apple nuggets as a reward for his behavior because it pays to serve Jesus. Amen? All right. Give him a hand as he steps off here. Now, in closing... I want to show you a little visual aid here to illustrate about heaven. I've got some ABC blocks. Going to heaven is as simple as ABC. 
the ABCs of going to heaven. Yeah. Some people, this, by the way, this hat here is going to represent heaven. What's it represent, boys and girls? Heaven. There you go. Then, this box right here represents death. Death is going to happen to all the groups of people. These blocks represent all those groups of people. Some folks think that, A, all people are going to be in heaven. God is a God of love, and he would not send anybody to hell. So everybody's going to be going. Some people think that. Then there's B. This group of people stands for the born-again believers, like us, the old independent fundamental Bible-believing Baptists that are born again and believe in Jesus Christ as the way to heaven. Then C. This group of people stands for the people that are trying to work their way to heaven. Church, they're going to church. They're trying to do good deeds. They're trying to be good enough to make it, okay? Now, don't say it out loud, but boys and girls, which group are you? Are you trying to work your way to heaven like so many people are? Or are you, B, believing in Jesus Christ as the way to heaven? Or... Are you one of those, A, you just think everybody's going, all people are going to make it? Which group is it? Well, death is going to come to all people. And when death comes, who will be in heaven? What do you got to know to get to heaven? Well, first letter, A, stands for the ABCs of going to heaven. Admit that you've sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, we live in a day where folks don't want to admit it was my fault. I messed up. I am sorry. I did it. People are too full of pride. And they don't want to admit their behaviors. Many times we can't get along because of our unwillingness to apologize because we're just always right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so we'll lie to cover our tracks. We'll manipulate. We'll twist the truth, stretch the truth. Oh, yeah. You've got to be willing to admit, I have sinned. When was the last time that you said, I'm sorry, I was wrong? You ought to be able to do that without hesitation and make your wrongs right and have a clean slate. If you're going to get along with people, you've got to be willing to admit, hey, I messed up. I let you down. I'm sorry. That goes a long way when you say it sincerely. Hey, boys and girls, that goes a long way whenever you told mom and dad, I messed up. I didn't get a good grade on my report card. I'm sorry. Instead of having an attitude, well, what do you think, man? I'm not as smart as my brother. Don't expect me to get all A's. We always have that attitude because we're unwilling to admit. A, admit, I have sinned. Next letter, B, what's it stand for? Believe that if you died in your sin, you'd split hell wide open. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross, so I must believe that Jesus died for me. And he paid my sin debt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. You got to believe that Jesus is the only way. You're not going to heaven because you're good. You're not going to heaven because you're a church member. You're not going to heaven because you got baptized. You get baptized down to the creek so many times the tadpoles and IQs know your IQ and social security number, but that don't mean that you're going to go to heaven. You're going to heaven because of what you've done with Jesus Christ. It's not, well, I took the Lord's Supper. You're still, that's not... Well, I was born a Christian. No, you weren't. You weren't born a Christian. Uh, I was born in a garage. That don't mean you're a car. So just because you grew up going to church doesn't mean you're a Christian. See, what do you got to do? Call on Jesus and receive that free gift of eternal life. Whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. A, admit. B, believe. C, call. You got to accept it. A man held out some keys for a brand new truck and said, Ranger Walker, I want to give this truck to you. I couldn't believe it. I was like, are you serious? This truck is worth $50,000 and you're wanting to give this to me? He said, yeah. He said, Lord told me to do it. Here it is, it's yours. Do you know, it did not become mine until I received it. I accepted it. I reached out and I took those keys. Woohoo! for that brand new King Ranch Power Stroke Diesel, had all the bells and whistles. I couldn't believe it. Well, you know, far greater than the gift of a truck is the gift of eternal life. 
Have you received that gift of eternal life? If you died right now, do you know for sure that you're on your way to heaven? If I came down and talked to you one by one and I pointed to you in your God-given eyeball, I said, hey, buddy, if you died right now, do you know for sure without a doubt you'd go to heaven? What would your answer be? Yes, no, maybe, think so. Oh, you know you're going to heaven? How do you know you're going to get there? Well, you know, I'm just a good person. Wrong answer. Well, I've been baptized. Wrong answer. Well, my granny was a Christian. Wrong answer. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, put my faith and trust in him, and I can tell you all about it. Right answer. January 10th, 1971, a little seven-year-old red-headed freckle-faced boy was sitting in church, and the preacher was preaching about heaven and preaching about hell. And it was like for the first time in my life, all of a sudden I realized I was a sinner. I was going to die and go to hell, but Jesus loved me. Jesus died for me, and see... I wanted to call on him and receive that free gift of eternal life. And in that Sunday night service, the preacher had an invitation. He called for those to come forward if they'd like to accept Jesus. I was sitting there. I was under so much conviction. I was crying. I was weeping. I was sucking air. I couldn't even talk. My daddy reached over to me, said, son, what's the matter? I couldn't talk. I was under such conviction. He said, son, do you want to get saved? He perceived. He understood it. He knows. You know, you kind of know when somebody's lost, and you know when God's dealing with them. And my daddy said, son, you want to get saved? And I shook my hand, yes. Man, he led me down to the front. Man, I'll never forget that Sunday night service. Whenever I came down to the front, the preacher's wife, Miss Cindy, she met me there with her little red New Testament. And she went through God's simple plan of salvation. I remember it like it was yesterday. And she said, Kevin, you know you sinned. Can you admit that? Oh, yeah, I knew I'd sin. At the age of seven, I'd committed every vile thing that a seven-year-old boy could do. Seven years old, I was addicted to drugs. I was drugged to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I was drugged to the Bible studies. I was drugged to every time the doors were open, I was drugged. But anyway, and she says, Kevin, you understand that B, Jesus died for you. You've got to be born again. You believe that? I said, yes, ma'am. See, how old does a child need to be to get saved? How old do you need to be to know you're old enough to understand? There's no age limit, and everybody's different. But if they can understand what sin is and the fact that they're a sinner and believe in the simple plan of salvation, Jesus dying for them, then they because except you come as a child, you won't enter into the gates of heaven. The Bible is clear about that. Jesus loved the little children, and so unless you have that simple faith, oh yeah, that's where the harvest is. 85% of the profession of faith come between the ages of five and 13. Oh yeah, and when you start getting up from there, there are fewer and fewer people. They get saved. That's why we need to reach them when they're young. Could you imagine what this country would have been like if Nancy Pelosi would have been reached when she was a little girl by an old-fashioned, independent, bible believer Schumer, all that crowd, all the baby killers. If they would have been reached when they were little and got to go to the treehouse ministry club thing you got going there, and, oh, yeah, it'd be a lot different. We've got to reach them when they're young. That's key. Amen. And I'm glad you're still reaching out to young people. That'll make the difference. And so that day, I bowed my head. I accepted Jesus as my Savior. Man, I got up from there. Man, I was free. I was saved. My sins was forgiven. Could you tell me your story? How do you know you're saved? Well, one way is you'll have a memory of that event. You might not know the exact date. Me, January 10th, 1971, Sunday night. I remember the detail. You might not know everything the preacher said, but you ought to have a memory of the greatest moment that ever took place in your life was whenever you bowed the knee and cried and called upon Jesus. See, it's not, well, Grandma said, no, no, no. Well, the preacher says they got a card on me. Is that what you're trusting in? You better know. You better have a memory in the portals of your soul and say, I remember. I know. Oh, yeah. You better know it. And if you're here today and you're uncertain, if you're here today and you're unsure, you're here today and you don't have a memory of ever being saved, get it nailed down. Get it settled. I remember whenever we had a revival and Cordy Watson, she was well into her 70s, in her upper 70s, about 78. She'd been in that church I mean, she was part of the furniture. I mean, been there forever. And she, in the revival, she walked the aisle and come forward, 
And the preacher announced that she come forward and got saved. The, the church was like, what? Courtney Watson, didn't, are, you, are you serious? Because everybody thought she was saved. But you know what we did? We didn't point fingers at her and say, yeah, oh, you hypocrite. We didn't think, no, you know what? We, we were glad. We were happy for her. We rejoiced with her that she got it settled because she said for years she testified at the front of the church, and I'll never forget it as a boy. She said, I've been faking it. I've been living a lie. So many times the Holy Spirit of God has dealt with me, and I resisted, and I held on because of pride, and I was playing a game, and I knew I wasn't saved. I knew I should have come forward. And she said, I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, if you don't get saved now, it's going to be too late. You're going to cross the line. And she said, I couldn't chance that. She said, I didn't want to cross the line of God's grace. And she said, I want to get it settled. Boy, tears running down her face. Man, she got baptized. And she was rejoicing, and the church rejoiced with her. Don't believe the devil's lie about what other people might think, say, or do. If you're here today and you've been dealing with doubts for a long time, get it settled. Nail it down. Be the best thing that you could ever do. It's not worth going to hell over. That's for sure. Two groups of people here today, those that are headed for heaven and those that are headed for hell. Which group are you? If I came and talked to you personally, what would you say? What are you trusting in? I hope you've done the ABCs, admitted, believed, and called upon Jesus. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our time is up. Heavenly Father, I thank you now for this time that we've had today to challenge your people with all the behaviors that Champion Dixie did, all the truths that were addressed and hit on today. So many things. I pray you'd help us to apply it to our lives. And we wouldn't be a hay burner. We wouldn't be good for nothing. We would be good for something. And I pray you'd help us to make our life count. But most of all, Lord, if there's somebody here today and they don't have a memory of ever putting their faith and trust in Jesus alone to save them, I pray that today they'd get it settled before it's too late. His heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I wonder how many of you here today would say, Preacher, I remember when I called on Jesus and I asked him to save me. I could tell you my story. I'll see you in heaven someday. Who could slip their hand up and say, that's me. I'm saved. I believe in Jesus. I've called upon him to save my soul. On my hands all across the room. Good, good, good. Many, many hands, most hands. All right, you can put your hands down. You're here today and say, preacher, I'm not sure. Preacher, I don't know. Preacher, I, I don't have a story to tell because I honestly don't remember ever doing it. I need to get it settled today. Who would slip their hand up and say, Preacher, pray for me. I don't know that I'm going to heaven. I'm not sure. Would you slip it up? God bless you. Who else say, Preacher, I don't know. I don't know. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. There's two. Who else? Is there any boys or girls in the balcony say, Preacher, I don't know for sure that I'm going to heaven. I don't ever remember asking Jesus to save me from my sins. Is there anybody like that up there in the balcony? Any boys or girls? Workers, you can see, you know the boys and girls, and you can see what I cannot. But if there's a boy or girl up there that you're concerned about, or if there's a boy or girl that slipped in their hand I can't see, I want you to talk to them. I want you to deal with them. I want you to help them right now. Right now. Now, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, there are two people that slipped their hand up. I wouldn't embarrass you for the world, but life's most important decision is knowing you're going to heaven. The greatest moment in your life could take place right now. If you raised your hand and said, Preacher, I don't know I'm going to heaven. Could you look at me? Would you do that for me? You said, Preacher, I don't know that I'm going to heaven. Would you just lift your head and just look at me for a minute? God bless you, ma'am. I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you came. And you know what? Could you look at me? I, I want to see you in heaven. Wouldn't you like to have that peace in your heart and know you're going to heaven? That's a good thing. Wouldn't you like to take care of that today? In just a moment, we'll stand. In just a moment, the invitation will begin. And I want to urge you, 
to leave your seat, to come down here to meet the preacher. And we'd love to take the Bible and show you how you could be saved on your way to heaven. There's a young man in the back. He raised his hand. Would you look at me? Hey, buddy, I'm glad you're here. There's no accident that you came today. <laughs> That's for sure. And I want you to be in heaven. Don't you want to get that cared for? Yeah. This is what I want you to do. I want you to stand up and come down here and meet the preacher right now. Would you do that? Would you come on down? Yeah, just stand up right there and come on down here. Good. God bless you. Good. There's two young men right there. Man, I'm proud of them. That takes guts. That takes courage. Man, this is eternity. It's their destiny. We want to make sure that they're going to heaven. These young men are coming. The piano is going to play right now. Heavenly Father, bless this invitation. Lord, I pray for these young men. Lord, I pray for this dear lady. And I pray, dear God, for those that are here today. And they're like Cordy Watson. They're holding on. They're afraid. Oh, Lord, I pray that today they turn loose and get it settled. Let's all stand together with heads bowed and eyes closed. All right. Uh, I'm going to have the men bring something over here, and in a minute we'll get Mrs. Seba down here. Twenty twenty. What a year. We had a lot of plans uh, for this year. Uh, some we were able to accomplish. I think of uh, paying off that second note, uh, tremendous. But some that we were not. Uh, Pastor and Debbie's 46th anniversary here at the Elm Grove Baptist Church in April, we weren't able to celebrate. The church's 55th anniversary in May, weren't able to celebrate. Team camp, as well as numerous other events that had to be postponed or canceled due to the pandemic. This opportunity, though, we would not let the pandemic get the victory over. The honoring of Mrs. Seba. Sometimes, as a Christian, one of the most difficult things to do is to trust that God has a plan for us and everything is on his time. So we will not dwell on what might have been. Instead, we will dwell on what we know. Deborah Jennings was born on March 28th, a few decades back. <laughs> to Delbert and Ann Jennings, we knew that she grew up in the Merriam area of Kansas City. She went to high school at Shawnee Mission North. It was during this time that she would be introduced to a young man from Independence by the name of Sandy Seba. We know this to be the second best day of his life. July 22nd, 1962. They would go together for four years, get married, and begin raising a family just a short distance from where they met. They served together for a short period of time at the Morris Baptist Church and would then move on to the Open Door Baptist Church where they attended in the early 70s. They left Kansas to go to Tennessee where Sandy would attend Tennessee Temple. They came back to the area in 1974 and a friend of theirs recommended that Sandy preach at a small church just five miles west of Bonner Springs on 32 Highway. They arrived there Easter Sunday, April 14, 1974. The building had been a one-room schoolhouse built in 1885 and converted roughly nine years prior to a church. It had tar paper wrapped around the exterior and there were nine people here that Sunday. We know that prior to their first day here that Dwayne, Rodney, and David had already been born. The church began to grow, though, because we, as we all know and have heard, Johnny was born. And the next Sunday, they had 10 in attendance. The church has experienced, had experienced four different pastors in the prior nine years before they called Sandy to be their pastor. And so it began their ministry here together. This is the only church that Sandy Seba has ever pastored. Oftentimes, the growth of the church will be mostly attributed to the Lord and the pastor. Can I submit to you that the growth that we have experienced since 1974 would not have happened without the faithfulness of the helpmate that God gave Sandy, Debbie Seba? Can I also tell you that it would not have looked as nice as it has for so long 
without Debbie Siva. My first Sunday here at Elm Grove was October 7th, 1984. It is easy for me to remember because my brother Christopher was born that day. I was two weeks shy of my 15th birthday. The youth pastor at the time was uncle, my uncle, Dan Kagan. It was a pack of pew Sunday. There were seven in my family at the time, eight if you count Christopher, which I am sure the pastor did. That would easily help the Kagans pack a pew. My uncle kept on us, and I quickly became a regular in the teen department, where the connection was made with the Seba boys. Dwayne was several years older, but Rodney a couple months younger. Over the coming years, I would spend considerable time with Rodney, David, and even Johnny. A lot of time was also spent at the Seba house, where I was able to spend time around Mrs. Seba. If you have been to the Seba house over the years, you would quickly realize who was keeping the pastor on task. It was Mrs. Seba. A number of things would also be apparent as well. That Mrs. Seba keeps a very clean house. Fun tip. She also keeps a very tidy vehicle. I will tell you a quick story. Many years ago, they had gotten a new conversion van. And they had extended an opportunity for me to go to New York with them to visit Dwayne. Dwayne had been stationed in New York. I remember several things about that trip, but I'll just give you a couple. Number one, I remember Rodney had invited a friend of his from college, Dave Lauer. Uh, Dave was a basketball player, multi-sport multi star. We were going to go up to Cooperstown, New York, visit the Hall of Fame before we went to see Dwayne. I remember getting out of the van, and Dave Lauer goes in, and they have one of those pitching radar guns. And Dave Lauer steps out of the van, and the first pitch at the radar gun was like 84. And I'm like... Yeah, I think I've got shoulder tenderness. I think I'm going to sit this next one out. I don't want to throw mine after that. The second one is, I remember all the way up there, Mississippi, every time we would stop at a place, she would make us get out of the van, make sure everything was clean before we got back into the van. Impeccable vehicles, impeccable house. Mississippi is a good cook. She makes a mean French toast. Oh, how I used to look forward to that in the mornings when I would sleep over with one of the boys. Mrs. Seba also believes in keeping a very clean church. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that up until about 18 months ago, Mrs. Seba still cleaned this auditorium every week. She decorated it. She wanted the house of God to look its best. This auditorium, however, is not the only thing she cleaned. She kept most of this building clean. A regular weekly cleaning of the pastor's office would inevitably lead to a conversation later that would go something like this. Well, I had it the other day. It was on my desk, but Mrs. Seba has cleaned my office since then. <laughs> Congregation, up until about 18 months ago, Mrs. Seba regularly cleaned the restrooms of the Elm Grove Baptist Church, something she has been doing for 46 years. I challenge you to find another pastor's wife who has done that. As I put pen to paper for this speech, I began to think of words that I would have used to describe Mrs. Seba. Faithful. Dedicated committed, gracious, soul winner, patient. Stop and ponder, if you will, over 46 years, how much time has she spent waiting on the pastor as he visits with you or I or counsels with someone or leads someone to the Lord before or after a service or any time. I can't tell you the amount of times I've seen her waiting on the pastor. I quickly decided to poll some faithful friends and fellow servants for words that they would use, and here are just a few. 
Gracious, godly woman, full of poise. Classy, very feminine lady, wonderful leader, faithful, loyal, hard worker, beautiful, singer, decorator, submissive, reluctant leader, as she humbly says, so many could do it better, will do anything you ask her to, even if she would rather not, if it means serving the Lord and accomplishing the goal of furthering the word and love of God. Fearless soul winner, close friend, classy lady, motherly, compassionate, Christ-centered, dependable, wise, humble, kind. Here is just a short list of some things that I am aware of that she has done since 1974 here at the Elm Grove Baptist Church. She's been a pastor's wife for 46 and a half years. She was a bus captain for many years. She has cleaned every building on this property. She was a Sunday school teacher. She was a nursery coordinator, leader of ladies' soul winning efforts, leader of ladies' visitation, organized the female altar workers, beautiful soloist, and has sung in the choir for almost 46 years, leader of the ladies' joy circle, coordinated numerous banquets and dinners, hosted untold missionaries, evangelists, and EGBC guests, at their home, in charge of ladies' conferences, and I am sure many, many more. A truly remarkable, godly, Christian woman. She has been an unbelievable testimony of faithfulness. If you are a male here with a wife, I am sure then that the pastor has inevitably said to you at some point in time something like this. Steve, I will go to my grave trying to figure out how you got Sherry. Or, Ronnie, I will go to my grave trying to figure out how you got Melissa. You get the idea. Can I submit to you, congregation, that I will go to my grave trying to figure out how this man got Debbie Jennings? The Bible says in Proverbs 31.10, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She worketh with wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. Verse 25 says, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Verse 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Who can find a virtuous woman? Pastor, you found one. And no doubt you knew what you had when you found her because you have been with her for going on 60 years. She has fed you she has fed this church. She has laid out your clothes for you. Thank the Lord. <laughs> she has decorated and adorned this church. She has kept an impeccable home. And she has made sure that the house of God was kept better. Ladies and gentlemen, Debbie Siva, the First Lady of the Elm Grove Baptist Church for the last 46 and a half years, a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. 
I can think of no one more deserving of a special day like this, and certainly no one more deserving of having their portrait hung in these halls than your pastor's wife, Debbie Seaver. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful picture. Pretty, pretty good gal. Hard worker. Never seen by like her. As far as the church is concerned, she was committed. I have brought her to church. Because when she can't come to church because of this uh, COVID, she has made me bring her to church at 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night so we can pray at the altar. People, people don't know how lucky they are to have a godly woman. There are many men in this room that are standing here who have godly women, whatever you do, thank God for them. And we wanted you to see it will be hung in the foyer out here uh, in the church. And I wanted it to be just her, not with me. I might have one beside her someday. But she deserves the credit for all that she has done. And I want you to know that. And I want to thank everybody for coming today. And we're going to eat. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>